Hi everyone, my name is Kathleen Shaw and today I'm going to talk about my research into dress codes and uniform policies in the education system. So there is a rising popularity of dress codes happening right now. And because of that, a lot of people have experience with the situation of having a uniform address policy. Um, so my question to the audience is, have you ever been punished for the way that you've dressed or presented yourself? Did, have you ever thought about a dress code that you were up against that you found to be unfair? Or do you remember other students in your past complaining about or protesting dress codes? As an adult, I've actually thought a lot about the unfair messages I was sent about my body when I was a teenager because of strict dress codes that I now see as sexist. Um, so that was one reason I got interested in the topic. Uh, dress codes and uniforms have seen this surge of popularity. Dress codes have um, also become stricter. That's sort of something that's happening as a piece of growing popularity, especially in elementary and high schools. Uh, the question remains as to whether or not they're a good idea for educational communities or not. And that includes um, as they become more popularized in uh, high in ed institutes of higher education, like colleges and universities. Throughout my research that I did, I learned that there are drawbacks to dress codes in general. So in order to gain the benefits that they do have, institutions need to be really careful about how they introduce dress codes to avoid harming students with policy that is potentially racist, sexist, classist, and transphobic. So the way that I chose this topic was that I was reading more and more about community colleges deciding to implement dress codes. And I work in a community college and it made me wonder if it was a good idea for the student body that I know and that I work with. It really made me think back also on my own experiences with dress codes and how they were negative experiences. And I was curious about the benefits and the drawbacks. For years, I also remember reading a lot of articles about protests that were coming from high school students, uh, particularly uh, about dress codes, some around prom, some just in general. And I remember that was a really kind of hot button issue for a while. And I was curious about how the protests that students had against dress codes and against uniform policies might translate into a college setting. Um, or if they would at all, if that would still be a protest. If it was a problem in elementary education, would it be a problem in higher education as well? Um, and then I asked myself some questions and a lot of my research questions really focused on colleges, although ultimately my project took me in a different direction and I just looked at um, uniform and dress code policies in general. Uh, but I started with questions like, are the dress codes in place in most colleges? Are these dress codes actually enforced in colleges? And what are the reasons for having these dress codes? Ultimately, I came to the decision that dress codes can be harmful. Dress code and uniform policies that are enacted without care and preparation can do more harm than good within any educational community. Um, so you can see that my thinking changed a little bit um, in the process because I did end up talking about educational communities in general and not specifically focusing on colleges where I started out uh, because the more information I gathered, the more I got information um, specifically about public schools at the elementary and high school level. Um, and I got a lot of good information about just ge generally in educational communities that I think applies to both high schools and to universities. So some of the problems that exist with dress codes is that they can stifle creativity and an individual's expression. They can be seen as classist. They can enforce unfair gender roles, which also um, can simultaneously discriminate against um, trans students and non-binary students and non-gender conforming students. And dress codes can also be seen as racist. However, many administrators do support the use of dress codes. Um, some of the reasons they list are that they create a sense of community, that they create a sense of safety, and that they add um, an element of professionalism to the way that students dress. So those are some of the main reasons that people support having dress codes. However, the benefits do not outweigh the drawbacks. Um, while there is a sense of community that can be created, 
If dress codes aren't carefully written, it can become a very non-inclusive and judgmental community that's fostered. There's also not enough evidence that has been gathered in studies to prove that dress codes actually do make communities safer or less distracted. Um, in one of the articles that I looked at by Bloom, there were administrators who admitted that they hadn't ever run any studies in their own population or seen or examined studies that, um, that actually proved that dress codes made things safer or that they cut down on distraction, despite those being some of the major reasons that schools listed for implementing them. And as far as the idea of professionalism, especially in the current climate, the idea of what it means to be professional and the importance of a professional image is really in a state of evolution, particularly because the culture shifting a little bit to remote work. So this idea of professionalism might even become antiquated in the next couple of years. Some things that I learned in the process, um, some interesting facts that I learned as I was studying this, well, I learned that uniform policies were popularized in the 90s by the Clinton administration as a way of dealing with gang violence. Um, which I thought was very interesting because it seemed to be one of those situations where I wondered um, if that was the most effective way of dealing, if uniforms was the most effective and direct way of targeting that problem in the first place. Uh, and then I thought, I also learned that dress codes are sometimes required in preschool facilities as well. And one of my sources um, by Batterai, an article talks about a parent who is um, on the fence about whether or not she approves uh, of having to buy an entire new wardrobe for her toddler uh, or a specific set of clothes for her toddler that's separate from her play clothes so that she can wear a uniform to school. Um, seems It makes it seem like sort of a silly bureaucracy to make toddlers do it. And then I also found that some religious institutions, including colleges and universities, have incredibly demanding and specific dress codes. So I included this excerpt from Pensacola Christian College, a student handbook, which maintains that mustaches, goatees, and beards must be fully grown in between a quarter and a half inch in length. And if you're going to start facial hair, you have to do it off campus and come back so that it's long enough. So there are definitely some strict dress codes out there. Overall, what I learned is that to get any of the benefits of dress codes, they need to be implemented with care. Um, I also kind of wondered if this topic would be made obsolete by this shift to the remote uh, working and learning created by the pandemic. Um, I expect it to feel really strongly either for or against dress codes, but now I think that the situation is more complicated and nuanced. They can be good as long as they're done right. And I wasn't expecting to learn so many interesting things about the history and the complicated issues of dress codes, like the backstory of dress codes. So thank you so much for listening to my process of learning about dress codes. If you have any questions, you can email me directly at kshawton at dtcc.edu, and I hope you've learned a little something today.